Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. If it's not, what the fuck are you doing back here? This is terrible content. Go away. This is your chance to get away and yet you, you are joining me. But thank you in any case. Whatever your motivation for being here, ultimately I believe there's only one goal by the end of this video and that is to give you a fundamental understanding of the basics of how to play Grave Keepers. Grave Keepers is one of my absolute favourite stun decks. It's an absolute ton of fun. It's slow as shit. It isn't always the best, but you will always, always, always catch your opponent off guard when you are playing it at a tournament. And for that reason, I absolutely love it. Of course, it's one of the classics, which we'll cover in a moment in the video. But I will stop waffling and we'll get stuck right into the video for you now. A quick disclaimer before we do get started, I do have the world's noisiest pug. He basically snores while he's awake, and as you can hear, probably now he makes kinds of weird noises. And of course, he's hovering around me because I'm sat in the kitchen and he loves to be here. So apologies if you do hear any weird sounds in the background throughout this video. Hopefully we can cover most of those with a little bit of sound clipping. But anyway, we'll get stuck right in. The Gravekeeper archetype debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in Pharaonic Guardian back in July 2003 and was the first archetype to essentially exist. It was the first deck to have real support and a bit of a theme running through it that wasn't just an amalgamation of weird monsters that kind of just went together. The archetype is based on Egyptian Tomb Keepers and the deck consists of Dark Attribute Spellcaster type monsters with a single exception so far in Gravekeeper's Commandant. Some of the characters have even been seen in the anime, including Gravekeeper's Chief and Assailant, and others have appeared in the World Championship Series games too. The deck has seen multiple waves of support over the 17 years since their initial release, even as recently as in Soul Fusion at the tail end of 2018. The deck has seen a mixed output over time, mostly performing as a rogue option, however the deck has had many regional tops, although its last period of relative success would be over 2010 and 11, but it has failed to go much further than that ever since. So what is it that makes the Gravekeeper deck so popular? Why does it have such a cult status and how is it played? The first thing to note is that the Gravekeeper's deck has a certain aesthetic that many players find enjoyable to make use of, albeit a superficial benefit of playing the deck, it's one of the reasons people do enjoy playing them so much, despite their recent lack of success. In terms of playstyle, the deck usually has a heavy focus on stunning the opponent, primarily revolving around Necro Valley, which aims to lock the opponent out of their grave whilst using your own effects to mitigate its drawbacks. Necro Valley is powerful enough to have been abused outside of the Gravekeeper's archetype time and time again, with many decks still choosing to side it on the odd occasion depending on the format. Once the deck sets up a proper board, it can be very difficult for the opponent to break, and most people are not expecting to play against Gravekeepers, which can be a huge advantage, although many will at the very least side spell and trap removal, so players should consider this in their deck building. The deck does have many issues though, which can be difficult to address. The reliance on Necro Valley can be a curse in and of itself, and many of the cards only gain in their effects and benefits whilst it is on the field, and as such it's common to see a heavy reliance on cards that have to be around to protect this. The deck can also be pretty slow to get started, relying quite heavily on normal summoning, a mechanic that less and less modern decks rely on see their plays through, so players should keep this in mind when building their decks. For the next part of this video I'm going to be running through the main Gravekeeper's cards. I'll not be covering all of these because there's many that just aren't strong enough now and frankly never have been, but I'll be doing my best to include all the ones that most people would consider to be relevant. This list certainly isn't gospel but the intention is to save time for all of us on this one. Also it's very likely that I'll be reading these effects somewhat incorrectly but I'll include an image of the relevant card on screen so that you can see the effects in full but this will require some reading, something that Yu-Gi-Oh players usually struggle with. We start off with Gravekeeper's Commandant, the only one that falls out of line in the dark attribute sense. It is an earth attribute monster and the only one that diverges from this path. Its effect reads, more or less, 
you can discard this card to the graveyard to add a copy of Necker Valley from your deck to your hand. We also have Gravekeeper's Descendant. You can tribute another Gravekeeper monster to pop a card your opponent controls. We have Gravekeeper's Guard. Target and return a monster your opponent controls to their hand. We also have Gravekeeper's Headman. If it's summoned, you can special summon a level 4 Gravekeeper from your graveyard in attack or face down defense. This effect is a hard once per turn. This effect is also unaffected by Necro Valley. We also have Gravekeeper's Heretic. This card on the field is unaffected by all other card effects as long as Necro Valley is also on the field. There's Gravekeeper's Nobleman. When this card you control is destroyed by an opponent's attacking monster and sent to your graveyard, you can special summon one Gravekeeper monster from the deck in face down defense position except for Nobleman. There's Gravekeeper's Oracle and this one can get a little bit convoluted. You can tribute three monsters or one Gravekeeper's monster to summon but not set this card. When it's tribute summoned you can activate any of these effects and resolve in sequence up to the number of Gravekeeper monsters used for its summon. The first effect is that it gains attack equal to the combined level that all monsters tributed for its summon had on the field times 100. The second effect is that it can destroy all set monsters your opponent controls. And its third and final effect, all monsters your opponent controls lose 2000 attack and defense. We have Gravekeeper's Recruiter. If this card you control is sent to your graveyard, you can add one Gravekeeper with 1500 or less defense from the deck to the hand. We have Gravekeeper Shaman. It gains 200 defense for each Gravekeeper in your graveyard. Negate all monster effects that activate in the graveyard except for Gravekeeper monsters. While Necro Valley is on the field, your opponent cannot activate field spells and field spells cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. There's Gravekeeper Spiritualist. During your main phase, if Necro Valley is on the field, you can fusion summon one spellcaster fusion monster from your extra deck using this card you control and other monsters from your hand or field as material. This effect is a hard once per turn. There is also Gravekeeper's Spy. Flip effect, special summon a Gravekeeper monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck. Gravekeeper's Visionary. You can tribute summon for it using one Gravekeeper monster. It gains 200 attack for each Gravekeeper monster in your graveyard. If it would be destroyed, you can discard a Gravekeeper monster instead. And lastly for this section, we have our single extra deck option available to the archetype. Gravekeeper's Supernaturalist. It requires two Gravekeepers to make it. It gains attack and defense equal to the combined original level of the monsters used for its fusion summon times 100. While Necro Valley is on the field, this card and any card in your field zone cannot be destroyed by card effects. During your main phase, you can activate this effect. During the end phase of this turn, you can add one Gravekeeper monster or one Necro Valley card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. The majority of Gravekeeper's builds that are operated with the intention of being as competitively viable as possible will usually opt to go for Supernaturalist Turbo, or this type of build, with the focus being on establishing this insane fusion and protecting it using a variety of other support cards to control the board and gradually crank the pressure up on the opponent. Most decks will not run the Tribute Summon Gravekeepers anymore. The modern game has become too quick for them to be a viable option, although they can be great fun and effective once summoned, but for a deck that can already be quite slow, we'd usually opt for cards that offer us a good way to maintain what advantage we have to work particularly hard for in the first place. Most decks, in my opinion at least, will opt to run two to three copies of Commandant to make it easier to establish Necro Valley. 2-3 to three copies of Descendant for spot removal. 1-3 to three copies of Headman to gain quicker access to Supernaturalist, e.g. summoning back Spiritualist. 1-3 to three copies of Heretic. The card doesn't gain attack boost from Necro Valley, but it is very effective in builds that focus on board wipes such as Torrential Tribute and Dark Hole. We have 1-3 to three copies of Nobleman, a great way to thin the deck and search important utility monsters as well as adding another defensive option. 2 to 3 copies of Recruiter, which does what it says on the tin. 3 copies of Spiritualist. It's incredibly important in the modern build. Supernaturalist is your key to winning, and this card gets you there. It can also work with fringe options such as Quintet Magician. And 3 copies of Supernaturalist. This is one of your win conditions. Without it, you'll struggle to keep a good pace and find yourself lagging behind most other decks. 
On a note of cards like Spy and Guard and all the other classic options for the deck, their strength in the modern game is severely limited. These two in particular are just too slow. Guard has some merits as an okay piece of removal, but targeting is less effective in the modern game and takes a turn to set up. Spy feels in some ways like it should be mandatory, but a flip effect that just summons another monster isn't enough to outweigh the lack of speed involved. More or less, any Gravekeeper not covered here just simply isn't worth playing unless just for novelty purposes. Of course, for this part we won't just be covering Gravekeeper names, spells and traps, but all the relevant expected support that you would still consider to be in Archetype. We start off with Necrovalley. The reason this deck works in any capacity, it is worth noting that this card has seen several errata changes over the years, so ensure that you're following the right one. For some context, I'll show you the original Pharaonic Guardian print and the latest Dusa print side by side. The current text effect essentially is as follows. All Gravekeeper monsters on the field gain 500 attack and defense. Cards in the graveyard cannot be banished. Negate any effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place. Negate any card effect that changes types or attributes in the graveyard. There is Necro Valley Throne. Activate one of these effects. Add a Gravekeeper's monster from the deck to the hand. Immediately after this effect resolves, Normal summon a Gravekeeper monster. You can only activate one copy of Throne per turn. We have Hidden Temples of the Necro Valley. This can only be activated if Gravekeeper's monster and Necro Valley are on the field. Neither player can special summon monsters except for Gravekeeper monsters. If either a Gravekeeper's monster or Necro Valley are not on the field, destroy this card. We have Royal Tribute. If you control Necro Valley, both players discard all monsters in their hand to the graveyard. We have Gravekeeper Steely. Add two Gravekeeper monsters from your graveyard to your hand. This effect is not negated by the effect of Necro Valley. We have Imperial Tombs of Necro Valley. When a spell card, trap card, or monster effect is activated whilst both a Gravekeeper and Necro Valley are on the field, negate the activation and destroy it. You can only activate one Imperial Tombs per turn. We also have Right of Spirit. Special summon a Gravekeeper from the graveyard. This is unaffected by Necro Valley. And lastly, we have Necro Valley Temple. While a Gravekeeper monster or monsters and Necro Valley are both on the field, monsters your opponent controls lose 500 attack and defense. If you control no field card, you can activate one Necro Valley directly from your hand or graveyard. If this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's effect and sent to the graveyard, you can set one Necro Valley spell or trap directly from the deck, except for Temple. Necro Valley is an absolute must have at 3. It's the most important card in the deck. Throne is more or less a must have at 3. It's basically reinforcement to the army, but also the deck has major issues with speed and the extra normal summon can be a huge boost. Hidden Temples is usually 1 to 2 copies. Being able to lock your opponent out of special summon is a fantastic way to give the opponent major trouble, but the activation requirements can be tricky to meet at all times. Royal Tribute can both be insane and terrible. In the modern game, resources in the graveyard are often just as, if not more valuable than they are when they are in the hand. However, this can also end an opponent's ability to play if used properly, especially in conjunction with Necro Valley. Gravekeeper Steely is a nice card to have access to. Recycling resources is important in the deck, but running too many copies can be a bit of a brick. Imperial Tombs is very powerful, and although it has no real cost, it does have again some challenging requirements, so can on occasion be a little bit bricky. Writer Spirit largely doesn't see any play anymore, being slow, and too slow at that for the modern game. Temple can be a good option at a copy or two, making your monsters harder to out, and adding some additional resilience to attempts to break apart your board by keeping copies of Necro Valley available to you. We're going to quickly take a look at some external support. Gravekeepers can't win in the modern game on their own, so looking for external recruits is a wise choice. The following are just some of the options the deck can take a look at to take advantage of, but this list isn't exhaustive and will change format to format. We start off with some ugly ass pottery. Duality, desires, extravagance all work very well in this deck. Extravagance is the best option that this deck can use, given that most of the important cards in the extra deck really are just the fusion, and anything else you run is usually a utility option, but duality and desires are also much more budget friendly, and there's some argument to wanting to keep as many of your extra deck options available to you as possible. 
As a side note, Card of Demise was a fantastic choice for this deck, but it is currently limited in the TCG. You could also consider running a Lure of Darkness since you're still able to banish from hand, but there can be some drawbacks to this. Next up we have the Solemn Brigade. The Solemn cards can be a wonderful way to protect your assets in this deck. Remember, life points are just a resource. Stopping that one key card in exchange for some life points is a bargain, especially if it wins you the game. The deck can be susceptible to blowout cards like Lightning Storm and Evenly Matched. Both of these are very common in the current meta, and having ways to effectively stop these is key. Fortunately, the Solemn package is relatively cheap. You can consider other options such as the likes of Dark Bribe, although I would always favour paying life points over giving my opponent more resources. We also have Hand Traps. Ash Blossom, Effect Veiler, Infinite Impermanence, Droll and Lockbird, the list goes on. Format to format, different hand traps offer a different set of options to combat the meta, and they fluctuate in importance depending on what is going on out there in the ether. There's plenty of budget friendly prints out of most of these cards now, and there's plenty of options to choose from. And the last of my suggestions here is the Artifact Package. The Artifact Package is a personal favourite of mine for this deck. Locking the opponent out of the extra deck using Scythe is absolutely insane. It's also less bricky because you're usually running a fairly heavy back row presence and that sounds kind of weird but it is very likely that your opponent will be tempted into blind removal which can punish them severely with this package as a whole. Scythe is the usual go to but Lancia can be a great option too both in conjunction with Sanctum. And that more or less concludes the video. We are going to end on a bit of a deck profile. I'll keep it up on the screen for a little while for you, of course. You can just screenshot it. You can pause the video and take a look through some of the options. I'll try and whip through it as quick as I can. I'm not going to talk in any uh, information over this. However, if there is a desire, I'll release a full deck list discussing my options and my choices and why I've gone with those. Again, as always, this is just a sample list. It is not what you should definitely use and I would encourage you absolutely to go out and test these on your own. And again, it just depends on what kind of environment you're playing in. The idea here, of course, is just to give you some ideas of what you could potentially try out and work with. And that is everything for today's video on Gravekeepers. Hopefully you feel that you've learned something. And uh, if you feel you haven't, you can definitely tell me that. Although I probably will just ignore your comments. Anyway, I only look at the nice ones now. But thanks in any case for turning up. Hopefully you've hit subscribe or maybe even the notification bell. And I implore you to do so at the first possible opportunity. But thanks again for making it here. If you do want to see me doing more of this type of content, you can definitely reach out. You'll find me across all kinds of social media. Usually Facebook is pretty easy to find me. Of course, you can drop it down in the comments. If there's some other type of content you'd like to see me cover as well, feel free to mention that, and I will always take any of that information on board. Thank you very much again for joining me here. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.